writing assignment today was to write a romance scene. So I think you'll have a lot of fun writing back to the suitors. Yeah, I'm excited. I think this will be uh, this will be really interesting. I'm really excited to read them. Interesting mm -hmm. or mm, maybe just getting a little bit more more intimate and uh, so a little bit more exciting. So today, Roxanne received two gifts: one from Baudelaire and one from Shelley. Uh, the romance story I wrote was uh, was science fiction, and the my my gift to Roxanne is one of my very favorite science fiction novels. So I thought it it, it would be appropriate today to uh, to couple the two. It's obviously a science fiction um, book. I haven't read it before, but you know, so nice that he would you know share that with me. If she doesn't get it, then she doesn't need to get it, and that's okay. If she does get it gonna get along just fine and we'll be able to do a, a whole another show about how happy we are when I was young I had a windsurfing incident as I slipped under the water a boater saw me go under as he carried my lifeless body from his boat this medallion snapped off his necklace and was trapped in my wetsuit I never learned nor heard of him again it marks for me the day that God looked down on me and said not yet young man I have a plan for you and he sent me an angel When the suitor is vulnerable with me and they give me a piece of their soul or a piece of experience, then we have a kind of a, a personal connection that I can relate to, that then we have a, a bond that we can kind of take further. He gazed up at the massive solar sail propelling his rickety craft. Its shimmering surface betrayed the empty blackness of deep space. Nine months ago, Chuck had been craving the solitude of this journey, but now, for the first time, he was anxious to get back home. The lights were dim, soft music was playing, and there were candles on every table. Roxanne looked brilliant. Her shoulder-length hair looked smart as it laid against her face. She always had that look of being simple, yet her eyes gave you the notion of sophistication. Percy slid to the end of their king-sized playground and took one tired, throbbing foot between his hands. He was strong and his grip felt both professional and passionate. He knew exactly where to squeeze to get her blood flowing. His thumbs pressed hard into the sole and Roxanne sighed with approval. She knew where this was going and couldn't decide which was better, the journey or the destination. A night of aerobic sex was not in the cards tonight, so obviously um, a very sexual, physical person, which I am as well. And, uh, and so I was really, like, connection, like, this is connection, this, this, I connect very well with, with this. Sam Coleridge walked off the football field and there she was. Roxanne, one of the physiotherapists for the team, was fixing up a table for one of Sam's teammates. It was halfway through the second half. His team was down by six points. One touchdown and they win. She looked up and saw him. Their eyes locked and all the noise and pressure melted away. All Sam could think about was wanting to take her in, her, take her in his arms and never let her go. It brought up memories of me watching my ex playing soccer or hockey and, and just watching them and it's like they're out there and they're like skating or doing their sport and you're watching them and you're so proud of them and, and it just made me smile and it made me really happy and, and so I just got, I just, it touched me in some way. In the previous Dear Roxanne, Roxanne was struggling with eliminating not one, but three suitors. Given a last minute reprieve, she decided to keep Longfellow around. But now, Roxanne must bid farewell to two suitors instead of one. We're gathered here this morning, as you know, to find out who Roxanne has invited to stay and who she has chosen to leave. Wild. Shelley, please approach the table. Uh, if I had to pick somebody, I think it would be Shelly. I think he's just trying to get what he wants out of being smooth, uh, out of being a good talker. I know some people like that, and it works when they can pull it off. Coleridge, Burns, please approach the table. 
He's stiff competition for me. He's a very thoughtful, very intelligent man. And uh, I don't want him around anymore. I love the guy like a brother, but I don't think that, uh, that I can have him here and, and succeed as, with as wide a margin as I want to. Hello, Baudelaire, please step forward. We're coming down to the wire and it's all or nothing. So I was just a little bit kind of nervous by that. I'm pretty sure with my gut and how I feel. And so I'm pretty confident in my decision. The time has come. All those who have been asked to stay, please take your place by the fire. You could always misinterpret anyone's writing, no matter how truthful it is. So it's, it's pretty hard to, to say, I know her. I'm getting to know her. And it's starting to feel like we're actually kind of just friends writing and it's less about kind of trying to sell yourself. I always think I could be one of them. I don't, I, I don't know anything about Roxanne, so uh, if she doesn't like me, that's fine. <laughs> and will the Dear Johns please remain standing? Baudelaire, Lalo, your journeys end here. I congratulate you both on making it this far. Pack up your things and leave the Kicking Horse Mountain Resort. Gentlemen, goodbye. Dear John, thank you for your cute and witty letter as well as your gift. You made me smile and for that I thank you. When I was with you today, I did not connect with your energy. The answers to my questions were great, but I'm looking for a little bit more. In addition, it seems as though you are being guided in a fairly religious direction, which is so great, and I would consider myself spiritual, but not necessarily in the traditional sense. Thanks for being part of this journey with me, Roxanne. Yes, I'm a, I'm a religious zealot, Bible thumper. Um, I don't. Th I think she's a church-going girl, but uh, we don't uh, we don't share that the same view of the world. I want a spiritual man, um, peaceful and kind, and all those things, but but not you know hardcore um, uh, religious. Um, a little bit more open. So I was just a little bit kind of nervous by that. Dear John, I was touched by everything you've done and shared with me, and obviously with the other suitors as well. I can tell from your writing, you are educated, mature, and have an enormous heart, but I just don't feel a romantic connection through your writing. Without meeting you, I can feel you are a special soul. Good luck and take care, Roxanne. I can be a little bit more open now. I, I've been single for quite some time, and uh, just having trouble sharing, and I believe now that I can maybe share express myself a little bit more and maybe I won't be so afraid really great romantic uh, writing uh, I just it's just not me the words he chooses the things that he's saying is something I would never I wouldn't say or I wouldn't do next time on the letters rediscovering the art of courtship the suitors take a big leap for love both on the range and on the page. If you can honestly portray your emotion, then you're doing your job as an artist, as a poet. Meanwhile, Roxanne faces one of her toughest decisions yet when she eliminates one more suitor, leaving the final three to compete for her heart.